one of the reasons that we have routines is because it takes the energy out of making a decision. Welcome to Champions Mojo Weekly Podcast, where your hosts Kelly Pallas and Maria Parker share with you what it takes to be a champion. Kelly is a former Division I head swim coach, Olympic trials qualifier, and holds Masters World and National Swimming Records, and Maria holds world records in endurance cycling, and was the overall women's winner of the world's toughest bike race, Race Across America. They'll be sharing their personal stories and wisdom, along with interviewing other champions to give you the tools you need for becoming a true champion in your own life. And now, your host, Kelly Pallas. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Champions Mojo podcast. Today's show is going to be powerful. We're going to talk about the power of routines. Routines, which might also be referred to as rituals, habits, or practices, are something that champions most definitely use. And so do business leaders, great parents, and successful people across the board. Routines may not initially sound like they are game changers, but they really are. And as always, I am co-hosting with Maria Parker. Maria, hello. Hey, Kelly. <laughs> Hi. I'm, I'm excited for today's show. I'm I'm really connected to this topic. It's sort of a new uh concept for me. So I'm excited about how to how to incorporate routines into your life. And um I love them and there are so many benefits from having routines. Here are some. Let's see, it makes us more efficient. It reduces our need to plan. It creates structure in our lives, saves time which is, of course, our most valuable resource. It instills good habits. It breaks bad habits. It helps us become more proficient. It helps us to get the most important task done. And that's just to name a few of the general benefits. Well, thanks, Maria. I know that you love your routines, and I know, you know, because you're such a great champion and and mostly in life, obviously, um, that routines are a big part of why you're so successful. And I'm glad you mentioned that those benefits are general, because in my research for this show, I found something that really hit home for me. It just made so much sense about routines actually help mental health. So as someone who suffered on and off with anxiety my whole life, when I don't have a routine, I notice that my anxiety is much worse. So in on the mental health website, the other benefits for helping with one's mental health is that rut routines can anchor us, which is just what I said. If I don't have a routine, I feel like I'm, you know, kind of a, a lost ball in high weeds. It reduces stress. It helps us with sleeping. It builds onto important things. It can help with a healthy diet. It can certainly help with exercise and all of those things will really help our mental health. And Maria, I, I'm going to just tell people what we talked about right before we got on because I think it was so funny that, you know, I sent you an email and prep for this and said, hey, let's let's each list five routines. And you're like, oh, my gosh, I think five's too many. And I thought five was way too few, which is just <laughs> it's just really funny um, that. So I said, hey, you know, we said, let's just talk about it, you know, on the recording because we want to people to hear, you know, our authentic uh, conversations, which is why we started this podcast. So yeah, I, th I think one of my my thought about routines is that they are wonderful tools, but just like any other tool, they can become imprisoning and overwhelming. So there's, I don't I don't want people to to listen to our routines and say, oh, I you know I'd better do that or or I'm not doing that. Oh my gosh! But I will agree that you know my take on routines. I've always had routines in my life, but. But I've thought more about it since um, we've done some of these interviews with other champions, just, you know, that they are very conscious of their routines. And I think that's maybe like I haven't been as maybe conscious of the routines that I naturally do. And it's help it's helpful for me to think about it that way. But when I was preparing for the show, I wanted to say I wanted to think. I was I was <laughs> I was actually thinking about the grandbabies in my life. Because I have, let's see, one, two, three, six grandchildren now. And 
One of the things that I've noticed is that my children who are raising my grandchildren are doing an excellent job establishing routines for their kids. And they're kind of militant about it. It's like, okay, you know, we have to be home because the baby has to have their bath at 730. And I'm like, well, why? We're having a good time now. But what I've observed is that the babies, the children, my kids and my grandkids do better if they follow a routine. The, the, the babies seem to just sleep better, eat better, thrive. And my kids know what they can and cannot do. So I, I mean, if you just think about kids do well with routines, then you sort of extend it to yourself then, you, you know, you, you can embrace this concept. Absolutely. And we have interviewed so many great champions and we've talked about really, you know, hot topics regarding health and fitness and just wellness and, and succeeding. And as I'm looking into how important it is to have a sleeping routine and eating routine. So we as humans really thrive on a routine. And our last episode that we just did uh, was Eat Like a Champion, where when I did a lot of research into the intermittent fasting that I talked about, the best thought is that do it at the same time every day. So you want to go to sleep and get up at the same time. You want to eat at generally the same time. So our bodies are with circadian rhythm, with circadian rhythms and the moon. And, you know, we used to go to sleep, like you said, when it got dark, we went to sleep and when the we didn't eat again till the light went up, came up. So I, I think routines are probably a little more innate and a little more natural to us than we're thinking. And it's it's funny you said you don't want people to think of them as a prison. And I feel like when I don't have a routine that I'm almost like certainly not in prison, but I feel just out of sorts when I don't have a routine. Unmoored. Yeah, yes, like you're... unmoored. Mm-hmm. Like like mm-hmm. I said, a lost ball in high weeds. But I broke down. So before I, I want to hear about what you do, and maybe this can give you some some ideas so that it'll be easy to talk about five routines. But there are so there's so much out there right now called, you know, about winning the morning. My husband says this all the time. I got to win the morning. Mm. And I think there are morning routines. I think there are evening routines that help you sleep better. Morning routines to get your day going. Evening routines to help you sleep better. There are performance routines. So, Maria, why don't you tell everybody what we do before we perform our podcast? <laughs> so every time we start a podcast, uh, Kelly and I have a little, there's three things that we do. One is we make sure that our, our, our thing, things are quiet. Our cell phones are on airplane mode. The second thing we do is an intention, which is, is a prayer sort of to remind ourselves that what we're doing here is, is hopefully to benefit others and to have a generous heart. So we have an intention that, that the things that we would say and think about to say would be, you know, would find their mark and and be be encouraging to someone. And then the third thing we do is we raise our arms <laughs> in a V, just in to remind v. ourselves that this is super fun and to fill our chest with an openness and and to begin with joy. Yes, and also activate our physical excitement and sound right. better. Right. So we yeah the right. V for victory in the arms. So there are morning routines, evening routines. I, I you know I I I categorize the podcast routine that we do is as kind of a performance routine or an athletic routine. And then I think there are over all compassing routines that that are just they're never going to change. Like my day to day routine might change. My morning routine might change. My evening routine might change in different seasons of my life. But as far as the long term Things that I will always be a routine in my life that I don't even have to think about are, you know, like life routines, which, you know, here we go, folks, exercise, (laughs) you know, that's always going to be a routine in my day. I don't even have that on my top five because that's just a, a thing that I do. Another one that this is a life routine. I have not had a drink of alcohol in 12 years and it's just a routine. I'm now into that routine. You know, it's just Mark and I just one year we decided to make it a New Year's resolution, and and this is the way that routines work. And then we went one year and we're like, oh, that was okay. You know, we're not getting empty calories. It's not that good for you. It's expensive. And then two years turned into twelve years, and now I, you know, I don't have the intent to ever drink alcohol again. And it's just something that I fell into that I think is healthy for me, and I know Mark loves it. And so just a, like a life routine 
that, you know, you can gain from from a daily routine that might turn into something that you want to do forever. I think that's one of the benefits of routine that that we kind of went over. But I want to stop and sort of emphasize that, that one of the reasons that we have routines is because it takes the energy out of making a decision. You don't have to make a decision every day to not drink alcohol. It's just your routine. It's what you do. It's, it's you don't have to think about it. You and I don't have to to decide every day that we're going to exercise because it's, it's long ago became a routine. It became part of who we are. So I don't have to add it to my to-do list. (laughs) I'm not, you know, I mean, I may try to schedule it, but I, it's something that I'm going to do. So I think that, you know, there's a, a lot of research around choice theory and choices and take energy. Beautiful, and ru- beautiful point, and, Maria. And, right. And routines, routines take, save your energy because it's, oh, we, yeah, this is just what we always do. Yeah, I, Maria, that is a great emphasis. And I I recently heard this and I, I think I, I've heard it years ago, but then I reheard it, that if you're 100% committed to something, it's effortless. If you're 98% committed to something, then it's just, it's excruciating, you know, because you've, <laughs> you, you've always got that 2% that you can take out, you know? But right. um, so I think that was a, that's a really great emphasis. So Maria, so let's, what morning routines do you have that, that make, you know, that make your day more successful? Yeah. Well, so I have, I, you know, when I think about it, I have a morning routine, which is different than my starting work routine. So, um, I do start work in the morning, but my, my get out of bed routine is I put on, put my feet on the floor and I go in and I start a cup of decaf coffee for myself and I take the dog out and then I uh, get the newspaper and I walk back up and I make a cup of decaf coffee for my husband and I walk in. And then we have a period of about 20 minutes where we have kind of quiet time where, where we're reading or doing, doing our own thing while we, while we sip our coffee. Um, and then the and then the day begins, which for me is I go out the door to exercise. So that's that's my my morning routine. Do you have a morning routine? Yes, like that, and Kelly? yes, and I think um, all of these routines that I you know that we're going to talk about, you know, work. You and I are constantly learning, continuing our education, listening to other people's podcasts, listening to TED talks, listening to YouTube videos. One of my favorite shows that I watch is Impact Theory. Tom Bilyeu <laughs> says yeah. he gives himself 11 minutes to get out of bed and that's it. If he does, if he's not out of yeah, bed in 11 minutes. I think minutes, I've heard that. I think truly that first five minutes of your day can really dictate. It's amazing just that how that first five minutes of your day. So I immediately turn on music on my phone and it's always something to really ignite me like I love shiny happy people by REM I love let your love flow by the Bellamy brothers I love oh I love that know, one too happy That's by such a beautiful happy song Farrell yeah. Williams sometimes I'll do my sweet lord by George Harrison you know just something that just like la just makes me cuz when you wake up I, I remember hearing Zig Ziglar say this that when you wake up you're you're in neutral your mind yeah. is in neutral. And if it's raining or your back hurts or the dog didn't make it out, you know, whatever it is, <laughs> you know, then that becomes the attitude of the day. And so yeah. I just, you know, when... Let, or if you have a bad dream or, or if you have a bad you dream, had, right. you know, like, if, but I just start with, you know, let your love flow. And then, you know, I... um I immediately really nice. get up and this this one is a common one. It's, it's purported... By I th- I should have known who said it, but I've done it all my life. Well before this, I think he's a general or something, and he gives speeches all over the country. And he's it's the whole speech is make your bed. So oh, yeah, um, I've heard that. It's a TED talk, I think. Yeah, make your so bed. I I make my bed every morning, and that's when I they could, they call making your bed a foundational habit. Yes, okay. people who make their beds apparently are successful in life. Well, who would know? Nothing pleased me more than the very first time I ever saw Mark Pallas, my husband, in his own like this is when we were dating. And I went and looked at his little bed before we were sleeping together, and he had made his bed and folded his jammies, you know, so <laughs> I, knew this, this I knew me. this guy was a match for me because I've made my bed every morning, <laughs> even before morning swim practices way back, yeah. you know, in high school. So I make my bed. I drink two cups of water 
which I read somewhere, and uh, somebody who had made it over 100 said that that was their secret by drinking two glasses of water. So those are my three things that I really always, always do every single morning. And then, you know, depending on what Mark's doing and what our day is doing, you know, I always exercise every day, but I'm not like you. I, I don't immediately do it right away. Um, so those are my my three morning routines. And I I wanted to not just talk about our routines, but some other ones out there. Did you, do you have anybody, Maria, that you know of that you're, that you kind of follow that inspires you that has a cool morning routine? Actually, my dad. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us. My dad is uh, 89 years old and he um, is incredibly disciplined but he would tell you himself that he was as a child, you know, as a young person, he was not. But he, he, uh, and he's a man of high emotion and strong feelings. So he has learned that routines help him live a really good life. So his morning routine, he does, it's, it's kind of where I picked up mine. He gets up and makes uh, coffee for my mom. And then he does a, a time of Bible study every, every morning. And then, you know, he goes out and exercises. I'm not sure what my mom's routine is. I think it's something related, but, but they have, mom and dad are on a really, uh, they have a lot of routines in their lives and that really helps them to, to live fully, healthfully and independently. They, you know, they have certain things that they do. They always eat at dinner at five o'clock and, you know, at, as a teenager that used to annoy me, but as an, as an adult, you know, I see that that frees them to do, you know, like what they say about playgrounds, having fences around them. So the, so a routine, a schedule is like a fence. It, it makes you feel safe so that when you're inside, you know, that schedule, you can, you can be free and you can, uh, you can, you can be creative. So, um, I would say that my dad's, my dad's life, my mom and dad's life, especially, um, has inspired me to make routines in my life that work for me. Yeah. And Maria, you do Bible study every morning, don't you? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Yeah. I think that's cool that you got that from your dad. And I'm sure we, we all like, Way before back J Jack LaLanne, my dad would be up exercising at 530 in the morning. Uh, Jack yeah. he, I mean, he was, great. he was, I mean, you know, my dad's going to be 90 at his next birthday. Our dads right. are the same age and, yeah. and he's, he's exercising every day now. Thank goodness. <laughs> yeah. With a, with the help of somebody. Yeah. Right. So, so that is, that's, those are great routines. I love hearing about all people's routines, but there are some that seem to be very popular. And I wanted to go over some of the more popular ones, which I try to do. Like uh, those three that I talk about in the morning, you know, are, they're just going to happen for sure. Then right. ones that seem to be very popular that seem to have benefit if someone's listening and they're like, well, I, I can't play music in the morning or I, I don't want to drink water or whatever. But, um, I know Oprah Winfrey says that she starts with gratitude. The minute she opens her eyes, that yes. she says whatever. That's like listening yeah. to the music. It puts you in the right. That's so good. Yeah, she does gratitude, you know, and then that's an easy thing to do. A lot of people keep a gratitude journal. Um, another one of the popular ones that I researched was um, meditation. So if you're a meditator, a lot of people will meditate the first, you know, once they get up and get their coffee, they'll do you know, 15, 20 minutes meditation, even even five minutes. I know 10 minutes of headspace is a popular one that I found as well. Writing, you know, the things that you're grateful for. Um, so those those are two of the more popular routines. And exercise is always in, well, I wouldn't say always, but it's in 95% of morning routines that I found for, for popularity of people. Um, I know Jerry Seinfeld meditates. Oprah does gratitude. Tony Robbins jumps into a 57 degree plunge pool. <laughs> so that's a lot like exercise or just cha yeah. changing your, your body routine. How about um, some evening routines, Maria? I do have evening routines. They're, it's probably less, less structured than my morning routine, but I do want to say something oh, yeah. about exercise. Sure. Kelly and I we both have Kelly, you and I, you know, you, you got me into the exercise routine more than anyone, but, but we've been doing it both of us forever. So it's uh, there just a day is not going to go by where, unless I'm sick, you know, where I don't get out and, and move my body. But what I learned for me, and I know this isn't true for you necessarily, but what I learned for me is that if, 
that if I do it, you do important things in the morning, which is why I pray and exercise in the morning. <laughs> because if, because as the day goes on, then, you know, it's easy to, to get too busy, uh, to, to have things happen that'll keep you from doing it. So I always, um, tell people who are trying to start an exercise habit that morning is a good time to do it. Also that if you're going to sweat, you just have one shower. <laughs> so, you know, if, if I don't exercise in the morning and then I, you know, exercise later, I might want to, you know, have a shower in the morning and then I might have to have another shower later if I, if I work out really hard. So I'm, I'm working with somebody right now who's trying to develop an exercise program. And, you know, we've been saying, okay, let's just do it in the morning. Right. <laughs> and then, then, then it's done. It's behind you. So if you're starting to, if you're trying to start an exercise program and it hasn't really become ingrained yet, those of you who exercise regularly, you know, when you're going to do it, but uh, the morning is a really good time. But um, to answer your question, evening, Routines are Maria. Like, before the, before yeah. you go on to the evening routines, which we're going to get to, I yeah, wanted sure. to say something that about exercising, and and this is you know this is one of the things that we do have an intention that we just want to encourage people to exercise. And some seasons of your life, you'll be able to exercise more than others. I know I have found that right. you're an every single day exerciser. I I have a commitment to exercise always in my life as often as I possibly can. But there are just times that, you know, I will go maybe a week where I don't exercise and then I'll never miss a day for six months. But, you know, one thing that I have found as, you know, I'm aging and and it's, um, I've you know, I've got a continually pulled hamstring. I have shoulder impingement. I, you know, I have all these things that I'm not the same athlete or the same uh I can't do the same type of exercise that I've done historically. I even get uh, PVCs, preventricular contractions of my heart, which scares scares me. Um, You know, (laughs) I, I just I know that, you know, I push my heart a lot. So so I look at exercise now for everyone that exercise used to be something that, you know, you you dreaded, you did it for a while, it's something you can't maintain. And now I have let myself off the hook where I will just go on a walk and it, you know, it's easy. I think people who, again, like you said, people who know how to exercise and know when they're going to exercise and can push themselves without feeling like it's, you know, a brutal task, then great, they're out there. But then there are people that, don't like exercise. They don't know when to do it. And I think exercise can be anything. It can be a walk. It can be riding your, an easy recumbent bike at the gym while you watch a movie. I mean, I think exercise can be made to be fun. And I'm finding that now where I've just notched down my competitiveness. I, I went for a run the other, I did a two mile run and I literally had held 13 minute miles. And you know, for you who know me, Maria, that is just, that's just like double my, my former pace. And you know what? It was just, it, it was what I could do. And that's what I did. So I think I want people to know that exercise is not grueling. It doesn't have to be something you hate. It should be find something you love and then do it. I mean, if it's literally like watching a movie while you ride the bike, then do that. But there are ways yeah. that you can exercise that aren't. It's not a bad word. Yeah, I I think that's a really good point, Kelly. For me, and I know this isn't true for everyone. Getting outside every day, even if it's a walk or gardening or pulling a weed, is really important to my mental health. I have darker skin than you do. I think I just need more exposure to sunlight to be happy. So I agree with you. I I think that people. Again, the habit for me is just to be outside. <laughs> Sometimes yeah. I just, you know, work in the yard, but 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 lots of times I run or I cycle or or whatever or I take a walk. But I I, I like what you're saying because I I think people. I remember your mom said to me once, "I'm not like you, Maria. I don't like to exercise." And I thought, "Do I like to exercise? Yeah. I don't think so." <laughs> <laughs> right. But I had just it has just become you know I don't really like to do the dishes either, but I do them every day. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's not a decision for me. It's something that I do. Yes. And um that's what that's what we're talking about with routines, right? Yes. Yes. That so it doesn't have to be a decision. It can just it can just happen. So right. um sleep 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 is so so important we're finding from every expert that it's like probably the thing that drives 
healthiness and um, disease. It, you know, lack of drives disease, and and if you get great sleep, it, it can make you really healthy. I think evening routines, the ones that I researched and that I do, are to lead into a good night's sleep. So we did. What are they? We did cover a few of these in our rest. Yeah, and re- we, we talked about yeah, rest sleep and hygiene, relaxation. Right. But those are my routines. Right. That's what you know. Mark and I constantly we go on a walk every evening after dinner. You know, we just get a little digestion and we just stroll and talk. There's no. You know, no, no exercise in that one. We always, yeah, we, we're, we're just strolling and talking. We turn right. on, we don't do any blue screen, at least no TV, a, no TV no at least an hour before we're trying to go to bed. You know, our routine is to have it be really dark in the room, you know, like just mm. as like we tape and cover any like little flashing light if you have your <laughs> cell phone and and now no cell phones in the bedroom at least you know like where you can touch them like you can have them hmm. if you want to get up and play music which is what I do but not so you can reach over and grab them how about you on evening routine yeah i i would say that my sleep hygiene and evening routine is is a work in progress I would try. I've been trying for the last year or two not to do any TV or, especially not computer work. I've gotten really good about turning off the computer, off my work. You know, not. I mean, I might, I might do fun, what I consider fun stuff, which is like researching something or whatever. But I won't answer emails or be available to work for work after a certain time, and that's that's helpful. Um, so, you know, loosely uh, our evening routine is dinner and just something fun together. You know, with my husband and I really like to do something that we consider fun, whether it's a walk or a, a fun discussion or, you know, just, you know, a bike ride, something something nice together. Maybe we'll just sit and talk before we, we go to bed. But it doesn't always work out that way. I, I tell you, that is probably my you know, area, area for growth. I have, you know, living near my kids, you know, there's, there's just a lot going on sometimes and they don't go to bed as early as I do. I, I wake up very early. So I have to really sort of protect my after eight thirty time or I'll, you know, I'm not, I'm not getting enough sleep. So I've started to just say, Hey, I'm not doing anything after eight thirty because I got to go to bed. And that's, yeah, everybody should know that in your family. <laughs> You're famous for that, right? That's 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 one of your life routines that I love about you. And I, I respect that. So the one that I think people most can relate to or most are most aware of are athletic mm-hmm. routines. You see the famous athletes, like I think, you know, because we do a lot of swimming talk on this podcast, Michael Phelps' famous arm flap. You know, he always mm-hmm. did his crisscross, crisscross before he right, dove before his, yeah. um, in every single time. And what uh, what are like, what's your main routine before you're going to the starting line for your. I, I think it's if I have one, it's it's putting myself in the right place. It's kind of the intention. Like we start this uh it's it's a you know as we start this podcast as we start recording this podcast we we have an intention when i when i go to the starting line for an athletic event i i try to put myself in the right place like what is this for you know what what's what's the you know what what should be what would be a great outcome i mean i kind of say you know i you you know i usually want to do well you don't enter a, a competitive event and not not want to do well by whatever standard you have. So, but I also remind myself that it's just fun. (laughs) So, so a lot of, yeah, a a lot of my, a lot of my pre, you know, for, for a bike race, it's different than obviously for a, a running event. I mean, but you know, for bikes are technical and you got to make sure the, the tires are, are, you know, are, are, you ha- are to pressure and that you have your bottle and your helmet and your glasses. You know, I have a little list that I have to look at before I, I start any bicycling event, but, but running is a little bit easier, fewer, fewer things to forget or to go wrong. So making sure I have all my equipment, but mostly I, if, if there's a routine that sort of conveys to anybody, it would be my getting myself in the right mental place routine. What about you, Kel? Yeah, th- that's great. Um, You know, I think maybe it's easier to warm up and swimming than it is Mm. on the bike because you can't go out. But I I have like I have to do a couple of 50s at a pace that I want to hold in Mm. that race. So 
you know, there's always a warm up pool or yeah, I guess nine times out of 10, there's a warm up pool where I can go. So my routine is just to make sure that I've held the pace in my warm up that mm. I want to hold in the race. So that's kind of like a warm up routine. And then, you know, same with you. I have the checklist of I've always my routine. I've always got to have an extra pair of goggles on me when I go hmm. behind the blocks because, you know, you you see the you know, it's not super common, but you pop your goggle strap and then, you know, you you can't swim the race without your goggles. And because I do the longer races, I could probably make a 50 or 100 without goggles, but I would not want to swim an 800 or a 1500 with, mm-hmm. without goggles. So I always have to have a pair of goggles on me. That's just my little mm-hmm. routine. And like you, getting in a good mm-hmm. place. So, yeah. So I think I think routines just do really, you know, help you. And Maria, so I'm going to put you on the spot here because we want to be genuinely from our heart. And I'm going to tell you a new routine. So I want you, while I'm talking about this, you can be thinking about a new routine that you've added to your life. And I know that our listeners can relate to this because one of my new routines is that I try to listen to someone else's podcast every day, at least one. And there are a lot, like our podcast, we generally try try to make between 30 minutes and 60 minutes. And usually, usually we're averaging about 45 minutes on our podcast, but there are two minute podcasts, 10 minute podcasts, two hour and 30 minute podcasts. So there's always time to kind of hear other podcasters. So I'm loving listening to podcasts. And I want to give a shout out to one that it's actually funny. This past week, I've actually made it part of my morning routine. It's called Morning Four, and it is um, it's four minutes long, and it is four items that are very uplifting. It ends with an affirmation. It's newsy, and um, it's put on by Katie Parsons, who happens to be the producer of our podcast. But I'm just giving it a shout out because I think it's a really awesome podcast and she does it every morning. Maria, think of us. We do this once a week and it's a lot, but she does this every weekday morning and it's it's a really great podcast. So I've listened to, you know, Katie's and then, you know, I love I love all kinds of inspirational podcasts and sports podcasts. And so I, I've added that to my routine that I just try to check out what other podcasters are doing and learn something. And, when do you um, do it? What time? And I? I think, you know, I usually do it in the morning. Like I, I like to do it when I'm folding laundry or emptying the dishwasher or something where I can. That's that's the awesome thing about podcasts. You can mow the lawn while you're listening to a podcast or driving or. So it's when I when I'm you know not hands free. You know I'm my hands are doing something but else. Your mind so that's is when free. I listen to them. My mind is free, but I'm doing some menial mm-hmm. task and I want to listen mm-hmm. to something else. Yes. How about you? Anything that you've been um, adding? Well, as Listeners might know, so I mentioned it several times, I've recently moved. So uh, my routines have, <laughs> have been in an upheaval. And I did want to actually add that to the, the conversation about routines. I travel a lot, too. And um, it's really hard to keep your routines when you travel and you're in another country, another time zone, or you know, you're just doing something else. You're busy usually when you travel. You're for whatever reason. Um, but it's even more important than to do it. You know, you mentioned the, that anxiety decreases when you keep to your routines. And I think when you're, when you're traveling, things are tough, um, and different and, and, and having trying, you know, so I guess having said that, I mean, when I, when I travel, I try to exercise and pray, which are the two main things that I do at home too. And that helps me just remember that (laughs) who I am. Um, and I guess it, maybe it helps keep my anxiety down, but so here in my new home, I've had to develop all kinds of new routines and my new routine that I'm most delighted about is I ride my, I commute to work on my bike, which I've never done before because I've always worked. Well, I've often worked from home or too far. It wasn't a good commute. Um, but in my new home, I am able to commute on my bike to work. And it's fabulous. Lots of times I think, ah, oh, I don't want to do that. I want to get to work. I'm in a hurry to get started or whatever. And no, no, no. You, you know, I made a commitment to do it. So I haven't got to the point where it's routine yet, <laughs> really. Because That is so yes. cool. That Maria, that's really cool. And we're going to have to 
keep our listeners informed of this because you are now living in Massachusetts. <laughs> so right. are you going to do that in the in the four feet of snow? Well, I mean, I'm going to do it when it's safe. Uh, I, it's they they uh, yeah, yeah. they do. I've been here during snowstorms and they do scrape the roads really quickly. So as long as it's safe, I mean, I am, as you know, <laughs> And as I'm proud, proud to tell, yeah. I am tough. Yes. <laughs> you are tough. This is a, this is the woman that won Ram and well, uh, I, no I, doubt. I like no a doubt. physical or a, I guess I don't, not just a physical, but I like a discomfort challenge. So if it's, you know, drizzling, freezing rain outside, I'm going to be the one who says, we can do this. It's only, you know, whatever. So just because I think oh, it's fun to Maria. boast about. <laughs> I so admire you. And just for like, you're so modest and, you know, you have accomplished so much as a mother and a grandmother and an athlete, but you're, you're running this amazing bicycle yeah. company, which if we're talking about exercise, we need to do a shout out for cruise bike. I mean, cruise bike is an amazing bicycle that is a recumbent bicycle. And as a cyclist, you know, I've done a ton of cycling on the diamond frames. They're so dangerous. I've had so many friends get in accidents. Cruise bikes are recumbent. You're looking up. You're safe. You're not going to go over your handlebars. They're so comfortable. The they put the fun back into biking. <laughs> yeah, that's what we um, say. Which is your saying. They're beautiful bicycles. We're, and we're, so just yeah, to let people know, you business. guys moved to Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's your business and your warehouse and your office is near there in Massachusetts. So it's part of the reason that you guys moved to be near family where, you know, a lot of your family helps you or works within Cruise Bike. You know, that's part of the move. But just to remind people that, you, you know, you're a you're the president of this company. Yeah, I figure so I better your ride bike it. To work. <laughs> but and I do. I, as you yeah. know, I I ride our bicycles a lot. And the reason I ride them is because they're comfortable. They're they're just they're just fabulous. But yeah, and they're beautiful yeah. and they're fast. And yeah. so they're cruisebike.com. Cruisebike.com. Not that we're putting Check an ad out. out. But j- just that you're riding your bike, that's cool. So we'll we'll see if Continuous. that continues. Yeah, ask me. I, ask me. Ask me in December if I'm still riding. Yeah, if you're still riding your bike. That's good. Now that I've said this publicly and I've told you to ask me, I will. Yeah. I know. But don't do it if it's not safe. So I know you I know you won't. That's your cautious little sister in law here. Oh. All right. Any action items, Maria, that are we gonna take any are are you gonna take any action out of this podcast uh, that you're gonna I, work on? I, I don't you know, I don't wanna add one of the things that I tend to do is just add, 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 add. And, um, but I think I will be, be thought the action item for me, I guess, is, is to continue to create in my new life up here in Massachusetts routines that, that not only bring me joy, but also make it easier for the people around me. And, and, and also I think would also say, which this is sort of counter to the whole subject matter that I'm going to be flexible about how those routines are established in my, in my new life here that, you know, I think, you know, it's always a balance. Routines make you feel good. Too many routines are imprisoning. So you have to, you have to walk that, that line and, and, um, I'm going to be intentional about that. That's my action item. How about you? I love it. And yeah, that's exactly where I was going with it. My action item is I can literally have a checklist that I start the morning with that I want to meditate and I want to do yoga and I want to, you know, I want to listen to a podcast and I want to do that. I like I have extra, you know, I have 25 things that could be I want to write in my gratitude journal. I want a journal. So my action item for me and for anyone that's feeling the pressure of, oh, my gosh, I have too many right. routines is to let right. them go. That if you do none of your routines that day, it's OK. That, you know, they're just to help get you to do things that, you know, can become automatic like exercise or whatever, you know, quitting smoking or just I'm going to give myself a break. My action item is. Yeah, have some routines, but um, don't yeah, go crazy. Yeah, sort with of them. the same. That's funny. I also want to just yeah. add yeah. because routines are help you form habits, and 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 in the study of habits, we talk about cues. And um, for you, the 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 and I love the music. For you, the the music is your cue to be happy and get out of bed in a good. For me, a cue is that cup of coffee. I mean that 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 cup of coffee says, okay, you know. 
your day is starting. And I look forward to it. So I have no problem. I don't have to wait 11 minutes. I'm getting out of bed because I'm looking forward to that hot, you know, bitter cup of, of coffee. So I think also you can sort of have cues that help you launch into routines. Um, and a cue is just something that, you know, that is easy. It's not like work, but it's something that you maybe, you know, it's where you, you know, it, like a, if you see, uh, you know, the key hook, you put your keys there every day, you know, a cue is, is usually a visual or, a, or, a or, or it could be a sound or something like that. So, so, so incorporate cues to help you help your routines. If, if your shoes are by the door, then the key, that might be your cue to get out and take your walk. Absolutely. I love cues. And I, I take my two glasses of water with me into the bedroom every night and I wouldn't probably drink them unless I woke up right. and saw that's them. That's good. That's a good you know, cue. If, if, that's right. If, you know, so that's my cue of watching that. So, well, great. Well, then we have covered routines, I believe, to the full extent here today. And uh, we really appreciate everybody spending this yes. time with us. And we thank you for listening. And we, and we, uh, look, we, we, we look hope... forward to hearing from you. If you have any, <clears throat> if you have any routines that you want to, uh, t- to tell us about, you can put it in, in the comments. Yes. Comments on uh on YouTube and uh, or you can yeah, always email, email us, us yeah. which our email is on champions championsmojo.com. We have our email on that. So well Maria, thanks for uh being my co host here today. It, and Kelly. we will see you next week. All right. All right. Talk Bye-bye. to you later. Bye bye. This week's quote of the week comes from John C. Maxwell. You'll never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routines. We are so grateful that you spent this time with us today, and we hope that you heard something that inspired, motivated, and educated you. Please see below for our copy of the show notes for any links or important information referenced here. Signing off for myself and champion co-host Kelly Palace, we hope you'll join us again soon, and we know you can be a champion. Thank you for listening. You've been listening to the Champions Mojo podcast, designed to make you feel inspired, motivated, and educated. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Spotify, and Google Play. Also, visit championsmojo.com to learn more. 